And welcome back to another edition of the Blue Review. I am here alongside Marcus Grant and Corporate Greg. I am Parker Bell. You can see all of our social tags down there on the bottom. And I just want to say, what a ugly weekend for the Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> Weather-wise and hitting-wise and basically every pitching-wise. Defense. You want to say. Pretty much. Yeah, uh, defense. You know, yeah. They didn't hit well. They didn't pitch well. They didn't catch it well. Other than that, uh, you know. The weather sucked. Uh, it, was, it was a great weekend, otherwise. <laughs> no, no. Um, happy Eclipse Day, by the way, fellas. Yeah, yeah. Are you going to go outside and actually go look at uh, it? Totality. So I, yeah, I'm not going to. I'm going to be smart enough to not stare directly at it. Um, I mean, you can look at it. You can like look up for a second at it. You just don't stare at it for you know like 20 seconds. Which is a <laughs> general rule about the sun, anyway, right? <laughs> right, <laughs> like, right. Like, um, like how long can you really look at the sun just on a normal basis? Yeah, no, but I have like the so if you like a calendar, like a spaghetti strainer or something, you can use that to look at it some kind of way or something. Really? Uh, like, okay. like a pinhole projector, like it will project onto like a sheet of paper or something like that. Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm back in the fifth grade again. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Scientist Grant. Right, exactly. You know, <laughs> yes, Mr. Wizard yes. out here. <laughs> Professor Grant. <laughs> um, well, at, at least Yoshinobu got his first win, which was one positive side of the weekend. Um, so we'll kind of get into a little bit of the weekend in the games, but mostly we just kind of want to check in, see how things are looking for the Dodgers. 12 games into the series, we'll look at some stats. Greg, we can kind of get into how we feel about the defense. Uh, yep. You know, the pitching, Marcus, I know you had a little issues with maybe some of those last few spots there. So we'll get into that. Uh, but before we do anything, um, I was at LAX last night, actually. So Where'd you fly our from? Friends, our friends from LAX, I actually took my little cousin. She's heading back to San Jose State. She plays beach volleyball and she's um, her spring break was like two days. So I dropped her off <laughs> yesterday and uh, it was just crazy how easy it was. I mean, I was thinking because of the whole eclipse that it was going to be incredibly busy. But you know what? Our friends at LAX are actually, uh, I keep hearing it. Greg, you look at me with those eyes. I keep hearing everybody <laughs> traveling to Texas and whatnot and to check out. I was, like, was going to ask, is that a thing? Are people traveling yeah. for the eclipse? <laughs> yeah. Like, I didn't know. Right. I just didn't I, know what the eclipse would cost. Uh, more. <laughs> I don't know. I heard it on K Rock. <laughs> <Whatever>. um, <laughs> but regardless, Los Angeles International Airport, they're our friends and they're changing the uh, just travel experience they're reducing traffic saving guests time and if you want to know more find out at uh, flylx.com slash transforming lax uh so greg let's just kind of check in how are we feeling about the defense let's just start right there it was ugly go ahead yeah. how are we feeling about this whole season so um, whole season i mean i'm well, the great about the season yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. i feel great about all that i mean they did lose two or three they lost a series for the first time but yeah the defense is a problem that's not that's something we've been talking about since spring training that the left side of the infield is going to be a problem unfortunately you know yesterday uh freddie freeman had a had an incident as well but that was it was a tough shot that was right at him that was really hard to to get to but he still had an error um but so the infield defense is going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem moving forward. But I, yesterday, I feel like it was not their fault as much because it was raining for basically the whole game. And Miguel Rojas even came out. He's like, "This is I'm, I'm playing in a puddle. How am I supposed mm -hmm. to?" They were determined, determined to yeah. get this game played. <laughs> right. it's how I, you cannot get away from this game just because I guess you know I don't think they go back to Chicago and playing the Cubs and finding the time to make it up or whatever happens to be. But I, the, overall, the defense will be a problem until they get it fully fixed. And I don't know how that's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm with you on that. Like, first off, I, I agree. Like, it was what the rain day, the rain delay was like two and a half hours, maybe almost yeah. three hours, I think, something like that. Like, Fif that two hours and 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. That told you that they were hell bent on getting that game in. Yeah. Because I, I thought about it too. I'm like, well, it's a getaway day. It started early. And yeah, I'm sure the, the, the Dodgers don't come back to Chicago. So I'm like, they were going to wait this thing out. Um, I mean, some concerns, right? I mean, the you know, Bobby Miller looked rough uh, on Friday. Yep. Um, you know, you mentioned the defense on Sunday not looking particularly great. Yeah, uh, you know, Stone wasn't is, great. Devin Stone wasn't great. This was their first real road test. Like these are their first true road games this year. Um, you know, they they ran up on a team that hits the ball well. Uh, it was cold. The weather wasn't particularly great. I, I want to sort of chalk this up to like, hey man, we're just put this aside, right? It's April still. They're still working some things out. But 
uh, you know, two things that we were concerned about have sort of reared their ugly head, the defense. And I still think that that back part of the rotation, uh, you know, still needs some tinkering. Right. Um, you know, I, I know Gavin Stone wasn't totally at fault for what happened yesterday, um, but I don't know that he necessarily helped the cause either with the way he pitched. I think they're still trying to figure out this six man thing. With, you know, are we going to see a bullpen day uh, coming up today against Minnesota? Uh, you know, there, there are definitely some some holes that sort of popped up again this weekend. Yeah. And so tonight it's supposed to be uh, James Paxton. So he, okay. that's basically your fifth starter. So I, they, if they do do a bullpen game, I guess it would be tomorrow instead of and push Tyler Glasnow back. So we'll see what actually happens there. But I think there's a problem. And even Yoshinobu Yamamoto on, on Saturday, he was good. He, but it started off shaky, right? Like yeah. you watched that game, like you, it was shaky to start off. He loaded the bases. He was one hit away from getting smacked around <laughs> yeah. in the, again, in the first inning. So he also walked a couple guys, and he needs to cut down on the walking guys. It's it's so early, but these are just the kind of the things that you have to look at when moving forward. But I thought Yamamoto was it was good. He got through five, but it's it still is a situation where it could have gotten very very out of hand very very fast. Yeah. And he got out of it. Um, you know, hopefully some of this stuff goes away when the weather warms up, right? When they go yep. places where the weather's a little bit nicer. I, I haven't not I have not checked the forecast for Minneapolis. I'm gonna <laughs> guess it's not gonna be particularly not warm. Good. <laughs> right. I'm gonna guess <laughs> it's not gonna be particularly warm there no. over the next few days. So I think some of this stuff goes away when they get back to more warm weather, they get back to Los Angeles. Um, you know, and just maybe a couple more times through the rotation and, and guys start to get a better feel for it. Because I, I feel like for none of the starters have we seen them just be lights out and in command of everything, right? I right. mean, you know, Glass now the other day didn't really have his curveball. Uh, Miller just couldn't really spot much of anything. You know, Yo Yamamoto has been in and out with, with some of his control and his command. So I'm still waiting for one of the starters to just put together that complete outing. Uh, it'll happen. It just hasn't happened yet. Yeah, I mean, we have a really long season, but at least for Yamamoto, things to be positive about, he has two straight starts of giving up zero runs. Yeah. So... You know, that's a solid thing for him to get. He, The fact of the matter is he, he loaded the bases, but he got out of it. And if, if you can do those types of things when it matters, that's a big deal. That was for Walker Bueller, who's possibly getting coming back pretty soon. I have a little bit of an update on him. But Walker Bueller, when he, what made him so great was that it didn't matter in the playoffs. If he, if he got the bases loaded and nobody's out, he was getting out of it. Yeah. You felt like he was going to get out of it, and he usually did. So um, I also saw over the weekend that Walker Bueller did pitch another. He went, I think, four and two thirds. Had like some. I don't know how many pitches. Maybe you know Parker. Six uh, pitches. Six six Ks. And six, <laughs> six, I think he six went. I think he went like I know, I know, right. <laughs> close to fifty to sixty. Uh, yeah, but 50, I'll sixty. Check. Okay, so probably whatever he did there, but he they want to move him up to about. 80 90 pitches down in triple a and when he hits that number is about when he'll be coming back so that could very well be, be at the end of this month which would be great and then you're so you're kind of concerned would be like if bueller comes back does he take someone's spot or does he go into a full six man i i think i think in the short term he probably goes into a full six man i think that's the immediate usage for him you know where, where they try to you know see if they can uh, kind of get him through four, maybe five innings to start and then let the bullpen sort of take it the rest of the way. But I think ideally they want to build him up so that he does just take a slot in the rotation. Um, you know, and I I think that was probably Gavin Stone regardless. I mean, unless somehow, you know, Stone is putting out a Cy Young type year. Um, right. But I just think the way he has started, it sort of will make it easier eventually to just slide Bueller back into that spot in the rotation. Yeah, I mean, it would be nice to do that because he's going to go in. When he goes in, he goes directly what to – he goes to four, I guess, yeah. because you're not. He's not going to go over Glass now. He's not going to go over Miller. Well, if Miller mm -hmm. looks like he did on Friday, he may be, <laughs> but you know. Yeah. And then you're not going to do over Yamamoto. So that's yeah. He's got to be the fourth starter, which yeah. is crazy. I mean, it might also just depend on you know sort of how the rotation falls when he gets up and gets ready. You know, True. Yeah. Um, you know, th there may be some way to kind of finagle it and maybe work him into a different spot. But I think right now the way the lineup sets, uh, he probably is the number four guy. Yeah, which is which is wild to think yeah. that he was the number one and now he's number four. I mean, and he's still what I don't even know what is he 27, 28 years old. It's not like he's some old man now. Right. Yeah. But just you know, those two Tommy Johns, it just kind of messes it That'll up. That'll age a you a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Yes, uh, he will. He's yes, twenty nine apparently. So twenty nine. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Great. Well, speaking of Walker, Greg, he posted, and you would like this because I, his, I know that you broke down. <laughs> 
He posted a uh, picture, and it just happened to have a hourglass emoji on it, Greg. Oh, uh, so hey, hey, do you have it? Do I, I need time. to see it. There's, I have to, I have to, I have, have to like it, save it in there. But it makes a difference. It. It's true. It's true. But it's you know, uh, looks like it's the full one. So we'll we'll see. I'll so there's two different. There's two. You know this, Marcus. Do you know about the hourglass emoji? Uh, I mean, I, I I know what it is. I don't know. So there's the two different. It. There's two different hourglass emojis. This is the whole, I found this whole thing out when LeBron posted his hourglass emoji. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sometimes it's dripping down, which means that you know it. The, it's it's uh, time is running out or whatever. Time is, time is running out, mm -hmm. and then when it's at the bottom, it means time's out. Time's up. Oh, you know, see, now I'm, now I'm scrolling. I'm, I'm looking yeah. for emojis. Look oh yeah, I see it now. Here it is. Yeah. Oh, look at so that. which one is it? That's it's very important. That's all I'm saying. But <laughs> it is. But it is. We'll get to the bottom. Time's up because when it gets to the bottom, if it's time's up, that means he's coming back. But it's. I, th I think it's more of like a time stick, and he's going to be back anytime soon. No, I, I love like it. I like that. Breakdown. I like breaking. I down. love that. I like down. breaking down yeah. emojis. Um, <laughs> but remember that. No, I was going to say yeah, yeah. For the whole LeBron thing, that was just hilarious. Uh, but to break down more things, uh, the offense. I know we talked about the defense just now to start the show, uh, but the offense is like. We could say, yeah, it was rainy and everybody was kind of off. Uh, but in general, this whole season, tons of highs, really only a few lows. Uh, so let's kind of get into some of those highs. You said earlier Mookie's kind of uh, coming back down to earth a little bit. But Shohei is finding his groove. How are we feeling about Shohei and his recent tear? Uh, it's Shohei. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think we all three of us said it here that once he once he hit that first home run and he kind of broke the seal that this was going to happen right and like in my head he hit that first home run and i'm like you know uh pitchers around the national league probably just dropped a loud f-bomb because they're like here <laughs> like, he comes <laughs> you know, here, here he comes uh and that's been the case so i mean he he's off and running um you know it he's getting hot mookie has kind of slowed down a little bit which is to be he's not going to hit 500 all year right um he's kind of slowed down a little bit um but freddie had an 0 for 5 game uh, i think that's rare yeah uh i think i think they said yesterday or it was a saturday was the 0 for 5 game and i think they were saying that last year he had more four hit games than he had 0 for 5 games <laughs> so um you know <laughs> yeah at some point this season all three of these guys are going to start cooking at the same time and this lineup's going to be deadly which is crazy that we're even saying at, at some point it will i mean their their numbers are phenomenal the yeah. top four those, those four guys whatever you wanted to call them they have it's like mookie's is batting his ops is over 1300 uh shohei's right around 945 uh freddie's at a 930 and uh where is he uh da, 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 da. i don't why can't i find will smith will smith's at a 950 like they're all they're hitting the ball and they're hitting the ball hard mm -hmm. and so yeah. it's they're all playing really well and they you know that they can actually get better they can go higher which is wild to me but i think look shohei is was always going to be just fine he's and now ever since that first one he's just just hit after hit after hit after hit he yeah. leads the league in doubles he leads the league in triples i think he's tied with mookie but you know he's he's doing all the things that he was meant to be doing he's going to strike out a lot that's just the type of guy he is but that's just something that is going to is going to happen he's not even leading the team in strikeouts oh it's well like, <laughs> so yeah, like when you got muncie on your team, that's kind of hard to do it's not even yeah. <laughs> muncie and t oscar are just like striking out a massive amount but if they're getting hits that's all you really care exactly. about yeah. Yeah. i think another guy the only there's only one guy that i'm worried about is strikeouts it's James Outman. The fact that he has double mm. digit strikeouts already and he's at the bottom of the lineup, that's yeah. a problem to me. I think that he's going to be fine. When he hits the ball, he's hitting the ball hard. Mm -hmm. He's just it, at somebody. Like he's he got robbed two or three times the other day. Well, very nearly could have won balls. that, could have won that game on Friday. I mean, it looked like he was going to win that game on Friday uh, and then gets, gets robbed of a hit. Um, you know, that's how, that's how the game ends. Yeah. I mean, that Cub defense was insane. So, no, Michael. Yeah. Michael Bush made an amazing catch at first base yeah. <laughs> on Friday. That was crazy. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, we didn't really give him a crazy amount of love because I know that he's striking out a lot. But, yeah, Tio Teo just continues. I mean, he's leading the team in uh, RBIs. And then I saw this stat. I think it was from Stat Muse on, on X, Twitter, et cetera. <laughs> Twitter. Geez. Yeah. Um, just say Twitter. It's fine. Just Twitter. Only three players in the league right now, 12 games in, have over 15 hits this season. 
they're all Dodgers. Mookie, Shohei, <laughs> and Will Smith. And wow. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I know they have a slight advantage. They played in Seoul, but still, only three guys, 15 yeah. hits. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, that's wild. That is wild. I, I mean, I'm sure teams were catching up uh, maybe one. It's only one game more because a bunch of teams played on Thursday and yeah. they didn't. But, yeah, I mean, that's, that's still wild. Yeah, no, the, the offense has been ridiculous. Um, and and Freddie has 14, by the way. So, yeah, he's, so right, he's almost there, right too. Behind, <laughs> right behind. Yeah. Um, I do, in fact, have, and you can maybe break this down for us <laughs> the Walker Fuller uh, hourglass emoji. You can tell us which one it is. And if it is, he'll be back soon. Or if maybe it's a little more in the imminent future. Let me get All rid right. of this. Uh, so that, that says Bueller's Day off is boom. Oh, there it is. Okay, oh, so it's still it oh. okay. So we're we're kind of at the beginning of the countdown. It's That's early. Right. It, it's t- it's time ticking. This is a time <laughs> ticking. You yes. can see it drop dripping into the bottom. Yes. He's not ready yet. It's not time's up. He's not in. He's ready, but it's coming. It's coming soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, coming like, soon. Know, that's that's our update. <laughs> you've just you've just put the hot pocket in the microwave. So you gotta wait for it for a little bit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it, it'll be great to have. forever. <laughs> I know, I know. It'll be great to have Walker back. Uh looking forward to tonight. What are we kind of expecting from Paxton and just this offense? I know that they're probably gonna want to bounce back after a rough day, a rough weekend outside of Saturday. So um just kind of give me your thoughts and previews on what we're going to see against Minnesota. Well, uh, hopefully better offense and better defense. I mean, I think th- those are the two things to sort of to sort of work on, right? Um, look, if this team hits and they catch the ball, like the pitching will be just fine. It'll be good enough, right? I, I mean, we saw that on Friday they gave up nine runs, still very nearly won that game. So, you know, as long as, as they, they come, the bats show up and they catch the baseball, um, then they're, they're going to be all right. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, the weather's probably not going to be in their favor this week, but I, I'm hoping for a bounce back. Again, just try to win the series. Try to take two out of three. That's the goal. So, yeah, I just want to see James Paxton keep his pitch count down for this time. He walks. He's walking a lot of guys. So in the last one, I think he had four or five walks, if I know, remember correctly. He's just walking a lot of dudes, and that's causing him to not go very deep in, into the game because – He's throwing a lot of pitches. I th- I might be wrong, but I f- seem to remember he threw like 100 pitches in five innings or something like that. And that's that's just way, way too many pitches. So if he can if he can keep the walks down, I think that he'll be well because he's been he's been throwing the ball pretty well as long as he's getting it inside the strike zone. Yeah, yeah, no, I think it's going to be a good matchup. I know Minnesota has been decent as of late, but they're also dealing with injuries. I mean. Uh, Royce Lewis, you just feel so bad for the guy. He's every time he comes up here, it feels like he's hitting dingers every game, but then he just gets hurt. So wish the best for that guy. Uh, looking in the chat, I kind of wanted to check in before we, you know, start to close up here. Uh, sure. there's a few predictions I was seeing. Maybe we can get your thought on those. Uh, shout out to BC in the chat. He says, bold prediction of mine is Otani, Betts, and Freeman will all finish above 300. How are we feeling about that, Marcus? Do you think it is one possible and Two, uh, do you think anybody else maybe in this lineup can hit over 300? I think it's possible. I think it is likely that they both fit, that they all three finish uh, hitting over 300 this year. Um, who else possibly? I mean, I, I don't know if Will Smith gets there. Um, he might, he might, he might flirt with it. It's hard as a catcher to hit 300. There's just so much asked of you. Um, I'm trying to think who else maybe. I mean, look, if if lightning strikes. I don't know that Teo, Teo Oscar could do it. It might just be those three guys. I, mean, I think everybody else may be, you know, keep everybody else around the 260 to 280 range. I think that works. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely those three. I just don't think there is another guy. And if they do, it's going to be shocking. Yeah. Um, Max Muncy is not a guy that does that very often. He was around 300 for 12 games. And you're like, hey. All right. Out, buddy. Congratulations. <laughs> you're over 312 games in. You're not batting 102. Um, so <laughs> Will Smith, I think he can, but I, I, yeah, you're right. It's just with as a catcher and you're everything that hurts your body and yeah. getting hit in the face all the time, all these different <laughs> things. And we talked about it last week of how they're right up on the plate on these guys. They're just going to get hit a lot. So yeah, 300 doesn't seem likely. If you can get anybody else around 300, you're looking great. But if those top three guys are all batting 300, you're in great shape because that means they're hitting dingers, they're getting RBIs, they're getting on base. That's that's what you need for this team to win. 
So we're looking at, I see somebody in the chat saying Barnes 300, LOL. Um, <laughs> Jonathan <laughs> he right Watts. He, yeah, he is. I think he's leading the league or leading the team technically. Uh, yeah. But Jonathan Watson in the it chat is two says, games. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Seems like pitching and shortstop will be a priority at the deadline. I know we're only 12 games in, uh, but how do we feel about that statement, Greg? I mean, are, are we going to see the Dodgers potentially, you know, go shopping for some pitching? After looking so at pit, all these guys we were seeing. Pitching, they're always going to go after. You can never, ever, ever have enough pitching. They'll all, they'll bring in as many pitching people, guys as they can. If they see a spot where they can grab somebody that's going to fix or like up their pitching game later in the season, they will 100% go out and do it. I don't know if they'll do a shortstop. It'll be something – they'll do shortstop if it's a massive problem. Like Rojas gets hurt to not be able to fill in for Mookie or Mookie is just completely falling apart at the, at the position – which I don't think he's going to. So I don't think they'll go out and get the shortstop. But, I mean, it's always possible. I just think they're go, they'll go heavy, heavy pitching, including relief pitching, and then they'll find holes. Wherever that hole is that they think is a problem, they will go plug that hole at, at the trade deadline. Yeah. I mean, I think it's interesting because people, I mean, obviously in the chat, but even before that, people have already been saying, like, hey, are they going to go out and look for a shortstop? Are they going to find somebody? And I think, you know, I think the moment – they decided to move Mookie Betts to shortstop is when the red flags went, you know, went up for a lot of people. Um, but I'm with Greg. Like, I think unless there's something just amazing, some amazing deal sitting out there, or somebody that they absolutely can't pass on, I, I think they're going to try and make it work in house as much as possible. I mean, they could wait on Willie Adamas, who's not, who's going to be, it depends on like if the Brewers are completely falling apart and they just need, they want to get rid of him because he's not going to be, he's a free agent at the end of the year. Then yeah, I could see that possibly being, but also you're not going to give up a lot for him if he's just a rental. Yeah. So there's a lot of all that kind of in play. So I looked it up and I think it's 45, maybe 47 in Minneapolis right now. Uh, so Another yeah, one. definitely not in the Dodgers favors. I, I really felt that and sorry to Bobby. I know it was his birthday and it was spoiled. It really looked like he just, could not get a grip on that ball like it was he did not like the cold he couldn't find his placement things were looking rough for him so we'll see how uh i keep i love it the big maple we'll see how he does the canadian out in the cold i think it'll be kind of his uh you know almost like his home <laughs> so we'll, we'll we'll see tonight uh but greg i'll kind of send it over to you because i yep. know that this week might be a big week in the blue review um so i'll go ahead and let you take it away and maybe preview some things that you you in the chat might see on the blue review this week. Yeah. So tomorrow we are actually going to have a guest we are having a guest that is not from a site or a site <laughs> from the athletic Fabian Ardaya is going to join us live on the blue review tomorrow. Marcus, you're obviously, I hope you can make it. I know Tuesdays are tough and you can't do it, but yep. if it's not going to be you, I think Travis is just going to kind of come in every once in a while and he may just pop in. We're going to give him a link and he's just going to sit in, <laughs> in where he sits and be like, Hey, I feel like joining the blue review right now and just do that. So we'll see a lot more of Travis. We'll see, obviously, a ton of Marcus and then Fabian Ardaya tomorrow. That's right. All right. Well, Marcus, thank you for being here today. Uh, good luck with everything tomorrow. We hope to see you very <laughs> soon. Greg Bergman, I've been Parker Bell. Uh, this is the Blue Review. Thank you to LAX. And we will catch you tomorrow at the same time. Fabian Ardar from The Athletic. Fabian. Fabian. Don't worry. That will not happen tomorrow. All right. We'll <laughs> see you tomorrow. Same bad time, same